As you already know, Russia's Nord Stream gas pipeline in the Baltic Sea, which provides natural gas from Russia to Europe through Germany, on 26 September this year, both the pipeline that is Nord Stream 1 and 2 were destroyed or the right word would be sabotaged. I've already made a video on this topic. In that, I've also said who did that and who's going to be the immediate beneficiary of this kind of act. It is Poland and United States. I request you to watch that video for a detailed explanation so that you get the picture. In this video, we're going to learn what is Russia's alternative to the sabotaged Nord Stream gas pipeline. I'll give you the straightforward answer. There is a new pipeline that is going to connect Russia with China. That means China is going to replace Europe for Russia. Let me first show you on the map where this pipeline is located. On the eastern side of Russia, there are four gas production centers. The first one is in the city of Krasnoyarsk. The second one is in the city of Irkutsk. The third one is Shayandinskoy. And the fourth one is in extreme eastern side of Russia on the island of Sakhalin. From Sakhalin, the gas pipelines are in operation till Vladivostok. From here till here, this is the gas pipeline which is named as Power of Siberia 1. This pipeline has been in operation since 2019. Now the plan is to connect more gas fields in this region with this pipeline so that more and more gas can be fed through this pipeline. Now if you see the Power of Siberia 1 gas pipeline, it reaches the border of China near the Russian city of Blagovashensk. From here, this pipeline enters in China. This is like an inlet of the Russian gas pipeline to China. Now, if you are aware, in 2019, the Russian gas company Gazprom, which also operated the Nord Stream pipeline in Baltic Sea, they finished the drilling of 176 gas production wells in this region of Irkutsk. Because from here, more and more natural gas can be supplied to Far East Chinese regions through this 3000 km long Power of Siberia 1 pipeline. I think all the 176 wells in this region will be fully operational by 2023. And they will be able to pump 33 billion cubic meter of gas per year to China over a period of 30 years. So this is the inlet for China. From here the Russian gas arrives. There is also a gas processing plant here operated by the same company Gazprom. It's called Amur Gas Processing Plant, Amur GPP, which is the largest natural gas processing plant in Russia and also one of the largest in the world. So from this inlet, even China has built 1000 kilometers of gas pipeline to the capital city of Beijing and further down to Shanghai. As you know, all these kind of projects are done in a phase manner. So the final southern section will be completed by 2025. Otherwise, gas is being supplied from Russia to China since 2019. Obviously, the quantity is less. And once this entire project is completed, then the supply will be in full swing. Now, there is also a plan to connect the power of Siberia 1 gas pipeline from this Amur gas processing plant with the Sakhalin pipeline, so that more gas from Sakhalin gas field can be pumped into China. Similarly, there is also another proposed pipeline which is called Power of Siberia 2. Now, if you look at the Power of Siberia 1 pipeline, it is massive. Just imagine how the second pipeline is going to be. So the Power of Siberia 2 pipeline, which is a proposed project, that means the construction has not yet started. It is going to start in 2024. This future pipeline is going to start from Irkutsk region because that is where much of the gas fields are. So from here, the pipeline is going to pass right through Mongolia. And another pipeline is going to be constructed that will pass right in between Kazakhstan and Mongolia. This is the trisection border of Kazakhstan, China and Mongolia. Now this pipeline will not be connected to the gas fields of Irkutsk. This will be connected to Russia's internal pipeline network near Surgut in Western Siberia. I don't know whether you know this, there is also an existing gas pipeline between Turkmenistan and China. This starts from Turkmenistan and then Uzbekistan, then Kazakhstan, and then enters into China through Xinjiang region. So the proposed pipeline that is Power of Siberia 2, which in future will pass between Kazakhstan and Mongolia border, this proposed pipeline can be linked to the Central Asia to China gas pipeline. This way China's domestic grid is going to get massive amount of natural gas. This whole project between Russia and China is being carried out by Russia's state agency Gazprom and China's National Petroleum Corporation. And now you can clearly understand that after losing European Union as a customer, China will replace Europe as a big importer of Russian natural gas. 
Even still, natural gas remains a tiny fraction of China's energy import. China still heavily relies on crude oil. However, it is always good for any country to diversify their energy sources. Even China is going to do that. And if you remember, earlier this year, in February, before the Russia-Ukraine war started, both Russia and China have signed an agreement to expand their annual gas purchase. Apart from all of this, both Russia and China, they are also planning to collaborate on nuclear power development. As you know, Russia and China are currently dominating the nuclear industry. Since 2017, 87% of the nuclear reactors in the world have been using Russian and Chinese designs, while UK, US, France, Canada accounted for just around 10% combined. That means developed countries or advanced economies have lost market leadership in nuclear industry. There is a big opportunity for nuclear power to become a major component of global energy market. And if you see the International Energy Agency member countries, they are mostly North American and European countries. That means this agency is dominated by the Western countries. So naturally they wouldn't allow and they are not at all in favor of China and Russia to advance further in the field of nuclear technology. They will do everything to put sanction through institutions and create threat perception in the world against Russia and China. Simply because Western countries and advanced economies cannot catch up with Chinese and Russian nuclear operations. So China and Russia, they are going to collaborate on nuclear power development. They are not going to stop. As it is, they don't care about the Western sanctions. And luckily, they are also geographically connected. They share border with each other. So both Russia and China, they are self-sufficient. They are using natural gas. They are also much ahead in nuclear technology. The Chinese market will help Russia economically. And Russia is going to help China by giving raw materials like coal, natural gas, oil, etc. They have also agreed to pay each other in their respective currencies in order to de-dollarize the economy. Now what else they need? And furthermore, China can also resell all these natural resources from Russia to other countries in the world and make profit. You see, the sanctions are on Russia, right? But China can buy those things from Russia and rebrand them to sell it to the world. And believe me, once these two countries have sorted out all the plans, what they have to do and what they have planned, once all of that is done, all small small countries in the world are going to take sides. And eventually they will create a market wherein you don't need dollar to trade. And when that happens, who will care about US sanctions or United Nations sanctions? So Russia has already secured its market in the East. The West is going to suffer a brutal winter. In the end, we are going to witness a shift in the global power from West to East. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.